Okay, guys, welcome back to the show. And today I've got a woman on the screens who is part of the adult entertainment industry and the wrestling industry. So two things we uh, cover a lot on this channel. And it's finally good to have someone that's active right in both fields at the moment. It's Miss Misha Montana. How are you doing, Misha? I'm great. How are you guys doing? Nice to see you. Thank you for having me. No problem. We're just saying first Irish podcast. Yeah, definitely. Yes, yeah, we'll celebrate. We need some like Irish car bombs to get it going, right? <laughs> Proper. You Irish drink them, yeah. I love them. I love yeah. Irish car. Bombs. My stomach does not, but I <laughs> quite quite. I haven't had one for a long time. But St. Patrick's Day is coming, so I yes, have to have one more day tradition. So. <laughs> Today is the 17th of February, so you've got one month exactly to prepare yourself for St. Patrick's wow. Day. The countdown, I'll put it in my calendar, like countdown to car bombs. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Um, have you ever been to Ireland before? I have not. I've been close to going about three or four different times, and for some reason it's just never worked out. I would love to go to Ireland. It's It's the top of my list to go. I've been to Iceland. But I haven't made it all the way over because I would love to go to Ireland. It's definitely one of the most beautiful places to me that I've yeah. seen. Is it the Isle of Man? Is that the that's popular in Scotland? Spot where it goes, yeah. I didn't want to say it incorrectly, but I love it. Yeah. I really want to go. So yeah. if I go, then we'll have to get car bombs in Ireland. <laughs> Absolutely, and I'd be a, an expert drinker, so there's no uh, no problem with that at all. Perfect. I love that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you say you were close to coming over, were you close to coming over to work in here or was it holiday related? No, it was holiday related. Um, I've had a couple trips, you know, planned to go and the people that I was planning on going with fell through. Um, a really good friend of mine that I grew up with is, is Irish um, and still has family there. So he, he goes every year i was going to tag along on like two or three of those different trips and it just never ended up happening i got busy with work or you know things came up and then just kind of disappeared out of the the peripheral for for now but yeah. i'd love to go on a trip to ireland i absolutely would love it i haven't been out of the country i was in jamaica recently that was wonderful um but other Pretty than that cool place there Jamaica, yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> I loved it. Um, you go obviously to like the resort side of the island, but it was like it was probably one of the best trips of my life. So I absolutely loved it. Yeah, yeah. Um, going back to like the beginning, I suppose, and when you were growing up, like, what did you want to be, or how did you end up in this industry? Was it kind of? I know there's two industries we're talking about now: uh, the pro wrestling side and the adult side. But what kind of what did you want to do initially, I suppose, growing up? You know, I actually, for a long time, I've wanted to be an adult um, at not even an appropriate age to want to be an adult, I would say. Um, yeah. I wanted to be an adult for sure when I was in high school. I kind of like made that determination then. I've always been curious about sex, um, about intimacy and relationships. I've always been kind of like a hopeless romantic myself. So even like as a child, like I was just like obsessed with romance novels and um, so definitely hypersexual growing up. And I've always been an overly sexual person and very into my sexuality and um, embraced my, my body and everything else. So I decided at a very, young age that that's what I was going to do and I didn't do that I have kind of like a like two sides to me where they like are polar opposite of each other yet they you know they conflict but they like are undeniable and yeah you know when I'm indecisive so I you know being in college I changed my major like three or four different times I ultimately ended up doing um, a double major in political science with an emphasis in foreign affairs and then a psychology, a general track. And my plan with that, I worked in politics for a long time and I was going to try to further my psychology degree into a master's in forensic psychology. I didn't end up doing that because I, I 
worked in professional environments for so many years, whether it be politics or law firms, um, different you know professional settings, and I just never was passionate about it. You know, it's something that I could have made into a very successful, lucrative, long-term career, but I just wasn't happy. And I had this urge inside of me just to to commit to doing adult because I was kind of one toe in, one toe out. I always tell people I was yeah. doing photography and video and all these things kind of on the DL, <laughs> like subtly and not embracing it fully. I didn't you know, want to make it a full-time career at that point. It was more of a hobby, but even it being a hobby could be potentially problematic for a lot of the careers that I was in anyway, unfortunately. Yeah. But, you know, when I made the, the decision to commit to it, I jumped in with, you know, two feet and was like, this is the shot. I won't forgive myself if I don't try. And then now we're here. Then that was yeah. several years. So it's the best decision I ever made. Yeah, no regrets, obviously, then about not pursuing no, the, the law school. No, you know, I and in my mind, it's not something that I want to do forever. I'm not 20 years old. You know, I jumped in a little late to the pond, but I love it. I'm passionate about it. I've been able to make it, you know, a successful brand for myself and adult and I'm going to transition into probably directing more as, you know, the years go on, but eventually mm -hmm. I'll step away. And that's what I never wanted. A, everybody thinks that being in the adult entertainment industry, it's a door closer for everything else, which I agree yeah. with. I, I caution younger people when you're committing to, to this choice, it is a lifelong thing that will follow you everywhere. Um, it will prevent you from being able to do certain jobs. It will, it will, you'll carry it forever. So what you choose to make with it, it should be all or nothing, you know? And unfortunately yeah. there are, that opportunity isn't available to everyone, but I caution people against it. I'm, it's the best decision I ever made because I'm literally following my dreams and it's working out for me. And, but that comes with an enormous amount of sacrifice, um, dedication, you know, hard work, and it's not an easy thing to do or to to be on top of. So I've definitely been working working for this for the entire time that I've been in it. But I'm very blessed and very thankful that it has worked out in my favor, and I am experiencing, you know, a high level of success with it, and I enjoy it more yeah. than anything. And I also want to try to change that that narrative where you know yeah. we should be able to be sexually free human beings and express and be in consensual entertainment industries that most of the world enjoys and then be able to walk away from that and not have our kids get kicked out of school for it or you know not be able to do other jobs or be judged and shamed just relentlessly because of of our consensual profession. So I work hard to fight against that. Um, I'm an activist with trying to promote the human side of the adult industry and, and fight for our rights just to exist and, you know, have equal yeah. rights. And just go out and correct people. Most of the shame and judgment that people carry is from not being educated or not understanding what the adult entertainment world is and opponents of porn will push you know false narratives you know mistruths they'll flat out lie about the adult industry and, and scare everyone fear monger you know that sex trafficking is linked to porn it is not there's all these mis and misconceptions that people have so going out and just having conversations with people i think makes a big difference so yeah do you think do you think we could ever be in a situation where like you know i look at the adult entertainment industry and when i started covering this on the podcast people were kind of like oh what are you covering that for and i i'm just like well i see the adult entertainment industry now in a different light from talking to people like yourself and i just think of it it's an extension really of the entertainment business that's that's what i think of it mm -hmm. no that's a that's a fair uh too because it is just entertainment and that's what people the sexual element to it is why people get so upset but they also you know if people think that sex should be 
something that's privately enjoyed between a married couple, that is their personal choice. And they're entitled to make that. But, you know, to inflict their their own value systems and judgments onto other people is just unacceptable in my book. But it seems to be widely accepted. It's not societally accepted to be openly, mm -hmm. you know, enjoying pornography, even though we all know that a vast majority of the population consumes it. So why can't we eliminate the shame that's attached to it and just have healthy conversations about education about sex about our bodies we're all sexual creatures you know we all will probably have sex hopefully at some point in our lives <laughs> so embrace that we're we're animals essentially and you know we are going to have sex whatever purpose it may be for for expression of love you know consummation procreation you know recreation <laughs> it, it doesn't yeah. matter we we should have more conversations that are open around sex it's not promoting it it's just having a healthy relationship with it and having a healthy relationship with our bodies having a healthy relationship with our partners communicating with them you know nothing is negative about those situations people attaching the shame to it is what's negative and when you're rooted in shame that's where a lot of the serious damage comes from psychologically you're potentially creating a predatorial type situation where people have to, you know they're um they're lashing out and acting out mm -hmm. their sexual urges that that are repressed like so it's i think having more honest and open conversations and education is critical to to balancing that um, and tr I think we're moving in that direction. It's a tough yeah. battle. It's not a, you know, you're going against religious institutions, probably the deepest rooted uh, institution to try to defend against. Um, yeah, but it's a dying you know, breed. I, it is like, well, that's yeah. what I think. You know, the more progressive we get, and I think the younger generations are becoming less religious you know yeah. at least even they're not practicing they might have those morals you know i was raised catholic i was catholic until my teen years i went to catholic school as a kid um like an after school catholic program for most of my young life so yeah. i still know all the prayers like it's indoctrinated in, you know in me for sure but it's difficult to unwind that that type of thinking not saying that it's a bad thing either but i think pushing it on other people is problematic um and that's that goes for everything i mean religion has overstepped its its boundary in everything since the beginning of its existence so it's a tough fight but i think the more progressive we get we're gonna we're gonna start seeing more and more of that more liberation yeah i think so coming back to yourself then and how do you carve out a market in such a massive industry to make yourself successful? Um, what kind of avenue did you go down or did you have a game plan and into be like, this is how I'm going to make this work for myself? You know, I've always been, I'm a very strategic thinker. Um, I have backup plans on backup plans. If something ends tomorrow, I have five other plans to those plans. Um, I try to think in the long term, and I I would encourage people to do the same thing, especially in this industry, because you can get so easily caught up in it too. It's it's a fast moving and moving industry, and it's highly competitive. You know, it's difficult on a lot of people psychologically, physically it's difficult and demanding and challenging. So, excuse me, when I went into it, I I was older when I went in. So I already have, you know, an uphill battle in front of me and I'm heavily tattooed. And believe it or not, most people don't believe me, but tattoos in the adult industry, it's even more challenging. So I went into it as a tattooed older woman. And, but I think that helped me at least mentally because being 20 years old and jumping into something you don't have the life experiences to really have a solid foundation or even like a sense of who you are or what you want you know yeah i i've debated this my, my whole life and i in those societal 
and you know social stigmas that are attached to porn is what kept me away from it for so long because i was weighing the consequences i was like if i do this i'm gonna lose the opportunity to do this and what if i don't make it then what you know then i have nothing potentially which is tragic but realistic unfortunately and um but when i went into it i was just like i'm going all in i'm going to commit to this i ended up it was my last i had a difficult time trying to you know get an agent i didn't have an agent for the first two years i was in porn and um i was able to email old school email the company yeah. called Alt and they responded they're the only ones that did and i actually now that was um that was just over two years ago or what's he three years ago was it three years ago three years ago three years ago and uh i'm now the only female director production manager and chief brand officer for that company as well as i've nice. had over 20 nominations from mostly working with them too so I'm very, very happy with that. So the point is, you know, go after it, but you have to go all in. I committed myself. I spent so much money. I damn near went bankrupt, flying myself out, buying the outfits, doing the hair, the makeup, like making sure my the representation that people saw of me and my brand was so on point. But it, I invested in that. You know, I think that's the biggest thing. If you're going to so did you that, did you go into this did you go into this or yeah just right as the pandemic was starting then i did and that was unfortunate okay. <laughs> that's yeah. kind of when i decided to jump into it in 2018 and then i was doing i was doing only fans before it was trendy um it was actually still mostly sex workers that were legitimate you know sex workers at the time that were on there so I kind of yeah. started with that and like more of the background kind of stuff. Um, I've always been an, into like fetish modeling. I've always modeled nude for since I was 18. And then I just kind of slowly started tiptoeing closer and closer to like, I'm going to pull the trigger and jump into the industry. Yeah. And I decided to the pandemic hit. And a bunch of these plans that I had, which honestly, I believe I'm a firm believer everything happens for a reason. So, uh, you know, this was, was destiny and divine intervention for sure, because I had all, I had a totally different porn track carved out for me. And so I was traveling down that path and the pandemic hit, obliterated that plan. And then I was able to connect with Alterotic and then the rest is history from there. So I'm very lucky, very lucky. Yeah, let's let's talk about the the pro wrestling element then of yourself. Yeah. I've seen a video recently on XPW. Are you still an active member there? I'm not actually. Um, okay. I have been at XPW for a few months. I I really enjoy my time there. I absolutely love love the death match wrestling. I was in a death match. Um, I actually, if you saw the video, I was bleeding everywhere because I took yeah. a hit so i have a pretty cool scar there i would love <laughs> to do it again. so i'm kind of shopping around now to see if there are different promotions and stuff that i can work with but i've been you know completely just busy with my adult stuff and trying to balance both and there's some personality conflict there too so i've just removed myself for now we'll see i might be back i love xbw i would never say anything bad about it it's my home base. Like they gave me opportunities that I never would have been given anywhere else. And I got to do the coolest things. Like, and I love it. And I would do it today. If I could, I would definitely be a part of it. So I don't know, you know, I don't want to close doors to saying yeah. that I won't be in the future, but as of now, I'm not involved anymore. Um, yeah. say that now for a while there, it was kind of unclear, but right now I'm not involved. And we'll see, there might be other things that pop up. Um, wrestling is a huge part of my life. So in every aspect. So yeah. I love it. I've always loved it. Um, not always, but once I started to love it, now it's like, I can't imagine not having it in our, my life. It's just so entertaining for my son is six. He loves it, watching it. And just the rush of even performing, like and being in 
that position I was in, like, I'd love, I'd be happy just being a valet forever. Like, I love it. It's just like fun to me. So especially being a performer myself in other capacities, this is fun, something fun that I can like show my family, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, um, and my son's involved, like he used to go to the shows and be backstage and it's really like such a family can like type feeling and community like i loved it i brought my three-year-old to his first wrestling show independent show over here in ireland last month and he loved it he just wants to go back again i love that so much that's and that's the thing like it just gives you this like rush and there's a love with wrestling that's unlike any other sport that i've seen i don't know it's very very deep it's a deep bond that people have and like wrestling fans are the best and the worst in the world because if yeah. they love you, they love you forever. If they hate you, it's like you killed their dog. They hate yeah. you. So and they take it so personally, but it's like because it is personal, you know, like they take it personal. Those relationships that they develop are with individuals that they relate to and admire yeah. and you know pedestal. So I get it. I get the there's kind of an intoxicating the feeling that surrounds wrestling and i definitely drink the kool-aid i love it so <laughs> do you find that do you find that maybe because of the industry that you're in it could hold back doors in wrestling potentially you know it could i've um i've thought about it and it's kind of interesting that you know xbw heavily uses adult film stars yeah, in their extreme stars. promotions they always have like that's kind of the the thing that they're known for because rob black owned extreme associates which was one of the most notorious like large uh, production companies in the adult entertainment industry 20 years ago and had extreme pro wrestling so the crossover was just like and the parallels between the two worlds like when you really sit down and look at them both under a microscope like there are so many parallels to wrestling in the adult and so it makes sense like some people just don't get it but if you really look at it you're like it does make sense that there's like a crossover there a lot of times so i think it was brilliant what rob did with extreme and xbw and i mean there's a possibility it just depends on what promotion <laughs> because they're yeah. you know I, about at one point i was talking about training to take bigger bumps and you know be more technically um sophisticated and and trained but you know and it's still something i'd like to do but i think you know once i kind of figure out what it is which direction i'm trying to go but i would love to be involved in any capacity with um even if it's just valeting and not being as physical as i have been in the past um i would love to do that so there there are options um there's some options lingering around that we're you know humoring at the moment so we just have to see i think the next six months we'll see some interesting interesting changes so i don't want to give like absolutely. but i would love it i would absolutely love it yeah would that be more of a long-term plan then obviously you're on about directing and stuff in the adult film world so that's obviously the long-term goal to get out of the acting element is it and to kind of behind the camera and that's yeah sense. I'm actually kind of, you know, getting to that point now. <laughs> um, I, I am. I, I, one, I mean, I'm 33 years old. I, you know, had a stroke. <laughs> I, I don't have like a normal life that most yeah. people, that even if they're 33 and in the adult entertainment industry, there's just, there's a lot of complications to my life that, just contribute to trying to keep up and maintain my schedule is just brutal it's rigorous like i'm commuting i took you know well over a hundred flights last year just to work and like it gets draining i'm drained and i took a substantial yeah. amount of time off um the last few months i've taken time off and now i'm just kind of at the position where i'm reevaluating how much i want to perform what i want to perform and now are the projects that I currently have, which takes a lot of my energy too. But I like to create, like, and I love performing. I think if I was selective in the performances that I was doing, and it was something that was written by me or written by friends or colleagues for projects that I had passion about, because I'm, I just feel like 
you know, you start to get to a point where you start losing that passion. You start losing interest in it. And it just becomes yeah. like, I never wanted that feeling. I, I think when you have that feeling, it's time to, to move on. Like if you mm -hmm. lack fire for something and I still have it, but I just, I think my priorities are changing and I just want to start focusing on other things and um, directing though, for sure. I will always do. Um, I'd like to do it forever. I, I think it's mm -hmm. fun. It's a great creative outlet. So as long as I have the opportunities to do these things, then I'll be doing them. And I am still performing. Everybody will freak out if I say I stop performing. They'll yeah. be like, nah. <laughs> uh, but what? I'm definitely dialing back a lot. So I'm yeah. getting old, guys. <laughs> What do what do you think your your doctor would say? Uh, you know, from surviving a stroke to being in death matches, what that wouldn't go down too well, would it? You know, they really don't like that. Um, I yeah. it's so when I like I decide I'm the one that comes up with like wanting to do this stuff too. No one ever. Why do you let people like talk you into stuff? I'm like, I'm the one. I'm the one who's talking them into allowing me to do this. Like, I yeah. wanted to do, you know, table spots and ladder matches, and they're just like, you are insane. Like, and I get hit in the head with things, and they're like, what is wrong with you? Like, you had a stroke. Maybe that's part of it, but I mean, it's not. But um, no, they're not overly fond of that idea, and I do have to be more careful i'm not um because in my mind though too i'm careful enough to where i'm not like irresponsible or reckless but i also yeah. don't want to hinder myself or you know i don't want to come to the end of my life and be like did i hold back because of like a physical limitation or you know if anything when i had the stroke it gave me an opportunity to live life more fully. It was a very, very harsh, like a wake up call to, I yeah. mean, I've always tried to be empathetic and, and value my life and obviously other people's lives uh, as being limited and special and precious. But when you have moments like that, it really puts it into perspective for you. So yeah. since then, you know, I'm trying to live a life that's full and wonderful and be, you know, as kind as possible and treat everyone with love and respect and share that because we don't know, you know, how long we have. Not that we knew before, but, you know, it just puts it under the the scope and makes you realize what is important in life you know what what's it important are these experiences important how you treat people is important how you want to be remembered if i die today i don't want people to remember me as a nasty bitter resentful evil person and not that i was before but it just makes it like that you know the impact that you have is greater when you experience like near near death kind of events like that so valuing what's important in life is is a priority so that's why i want i'm like yeah i'll i'll do these things like i might push it a little bit um but i would regret not doing them and so i don't want any and i want that to be an example to people too that are dealing with things be like you know what like don't let anything stop you if you have a disability or an illness or you know something that's holding you back like today's the day like why not go embrace it do what you want to do within reason obviously you know caution but um no i think it's great the only thing i won't do is jump out of an airplane i will never you'll never catch me jumping out of a plane yeah, yeah. You know? i can barely get on an airplane i don't like flying at all yeah no i i used to have to take like take medication to fly and now I mean, knock on wood, it's been like, it's been two years since I've had to take anything, but now like with the little like cylinder things in the air, I was like, might have to take something because now I'm getting nervous about flying again. <laughs> I was so good for so long and now I'm like, ah, oh, what do I do now? So. Yeah, yeah. flying flying is kind of like the bus over in America though. It's just so common over there, you know? So, it, that's when I commute via airplane. So instead of driving, I just like, I pop in a plane like yeah. it's so i spend more time in the air than i do on the ground half the time <laughs> i yeah. joke with people all the time like i literally am in the air more than i'm on the ground so um 
you kind of have to, you're forced to get used to it at that point. It's kind of like, uh, like shock therapy. Like they were forced you yeah. to get used to it. <laughs> but then now I am. So I have no choice. Yeah. Um, I just have to ask about like, obviously over the last few months, your personal life kind of was put out there due to dating Matt and whatever like that. How did all this kind of come out and what was your reaction? Like, were you surprised that, it was such big news, I guess, because the WWE is huge and everything. But just did that kind of take you all back, all that stuff? Yeah, it really did. Um, I I never anticipated that it would be what it was. And it just like how huge the stories were. And just like, it wasn't even like how big the stories were. They were big. But it was just like how consuming it was like in our lives um and and speaking strictly for myself too that it just consumed my life for months and it was nothing but toxic and negative and just lies and like slander and you know threats and harassment and it's just it was like relentless and And then it would escalate and then it's like it you know wouldn't get a reaction and then it would transform into something else and like and it would just like keep coming up and like be regurgitated and then they'd rewrite it and then it would get everybody all riled up again and i I was just like shocked to watch it i'm like what is going on you know and this people don't understand too like this is this is our life i mean being just yeah thrown across like every single headline and being dragged around the internet and luckily you know i've always been thick-skinned for the most part like i was bullied as a kid so i had to develop thick skin early on in my life and especially being in this industry like there's not a lot that pleases me you know like you kind of develop this like this tough exterior with stuff but like you know it's hard not to to be upset by something, especially that's so invasive. And like I've I've never experienced that level of like harassment that was so like one constant and just like able to like to get into your life so deeply. Um, because they were able to like get numbers and you know addresses and things that it just like it reached a limit where it was just so vile and so toxic and then also trying to like you know it affected it impacted my career um people and adult had opinions about it about then therefore had opinions about me part of the reason why i'm not with xbw is because of this situation you know it's like it's a lot so my life dramatically changed but in in my mind you know is like people that are so angry and so hurt and they're inflicting this pain and their hatred onto other people the, the only thing that i can do is just be myself and know that like i'm happy we're happy we have nothing but love in our lives and that's what we choose to focus on. You know, at some point we had we had no choice but to focus on on things that are in your face and undeniable, you know, and we still do. But it's just it's how you approach everything else too. It's like how you choose to handle it. Like I could go out and get into a mud slinging contest with everyone. I choose not to. You know, um it's it's toxic. It was awful. It is awful. I think some of the disappointing things about it is like what we alluded to earlier as well. And it was just like referring to you, porn star girlfriend and all that stuff, just to kind of get the ball rolling with clickbait and stuff like that, I think. Right. Well, and that's like, it was really un like, it was horrible timing, like inconvenient timing to that. I came into the picture and then there's a simultaneous story about, you know, alleged drug use and then putting yeah. the two together and then no one knows like, like our history. It's none of their business. So like, and I'm not going to put it out just to prove a point to internet wrestling fans, you know, um, sure. or anyone. So it's like, you're just sitting there while I'm just quietly watching this just like unfold. And you know, it's, it's just, 
a difficult thing to deal with. But I, you know, I hope for now we're past it for the most part. I imagine like it's, it's old news now, but I mean, people are interested in everything that we do. Cause as soon as I, excuse me, post a picture, you know, of us together or something, then the internet goes crazy and they write a bunch of articles and it's just an interesting experience. <laughs> so yeah. fine with me. Like, I don't care that people are interested in it. I just like, there's boundaries, you know, respect our private life. Like to some degree, I mean, we are both public figures. So that's something that we're both used to just on the scale. It's definitely increased a lot of attention. Yeah. So, but we're happy. Everything's like great good and we're moving on from the situations and you know everything is good so hopefully you know the next few months like it's going to determine a lot so we'll see what happens and and obviously for the fans matt is all good in a good place and we hope yeah. to see him on television soon he's so good like and that's what's interesting too because you know everybody the, the internet is a wild place as you know you know what i, I mean do. But, if, hey, if it's on the if it's on the internet, it's got to be true. Exactly, and that's the thing too. It's mm -hmm. like, and then some say like one thing, and then a bunch of other people will like see that, and then they'll start saying it, and this this like weird avalanche effect. And I mean, like the internet, I read stuff about myself, and I'm like, this is just like, how do people even think that this is true? <laughs> you know, and they do. It's crazy. Like the stuff that people eat up is wild to me. So. Yeah. Um, but it is what it is. And that's something that I've had to get used to is like changing my mindset with like, because I want to go and immediately like correct them. But that's also yeah. like, why? You know, it's unnecessary. It robs yeah. me of my positive energy, you know, and it's trolling and toxic, you know, environments. And it just, it's giving them what they want. So I don't engage with anyone. I just, as difficult as it is, but Matt's great. Yeah. He's wonderful. Yeah. He's happy great and happy so it's good excellent but the more the more famous you get the more shit you're gonna get in any in any walk of life especially with the way the internet is you know 100 percent, and that just kind of seems to be how it is like the bigger it's kind of a double-edged sword the bigger you get the more the more shit comes with it um and i think you know that it's kind of one of the prices to pay too for being being in that that public eye but as long as you're able to not allow it to, you know, affect your personal relationships, which is also difficult to do being under that much scrutiny and stress and judgment and, you know, the viciousness and the constant stalking and harassment and all these other elements, like it's difficult to have healthy relationships with anyone, you know, yeah. um, you know, my got family members that disowned me years ago for doing porn calling me and you know being like oh we saw that you were eating and so and so you know and it's oh, yeah. like you know it's just it's an it's such an interesting world but when you're in it it's hard to explain unless you've like been in it but you know we're all human beings like we literally are all this we're just like everybody else like yeah. and the more people that you meet too that are, are of some kind of a celebrity status like the more you realize that like we're all just human beings like and we're all entitled to like have as much as you think you know we're not entitled to privacy like we are entitled to have some privacy and to you know, be happy and healthy and have private private lives um especially for our children's sake and that's the biggest thing to the kids people don't realize too, like by slandering us all the time like you're really not just hurting us you're hurting our children Family. too you know and that's the most important thing to me that's when i get crazy is when people start mm -hmm. you know going after the kids it's like it's just so inappropriate and horrible but you know yeah. we try to just leave it alone and like you know they're not no one's gonna going to rain on our parade so to speak like exactly. i you know, we're responsible for our, our own happiness and our health and success in the world. And so that's where we just kind of keep our heads up and mind our business and carry on. And if people enjoy it, they enjoy it. If they don't, they don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't really have anyone to impress on yourself, like at the end of the day. And plus, like, I enjoyed the conversation today. Um, if you're looking at the rest of the year and I suppose your, your plans, what would you like to do for the rest of the year in terms of the entertainment industry? Well, I actually have 
I have a few projects right now. I'm doing, um, I have three series that I direct. I have, the third one is actually kind of a surprise. It's something that, it's a dark creative project I've been trying to work on. It's kind of like a carnival dark clown, but like a serious, dramatic, like weird, kind of sadistic kind of thing. Okay. And I've been wanting to do it for like some projects like that because I'm feeling creatively depleted. So I'm like, I want to do like go back to my roots, like the dark creative BDSM type stuff and like kind of show people like the reason why I got into porn and uh, what I used to do, kind of the old school version of me. So I wrote this whole story. It's a huge production. I'm shooting it over a week in April. Um, Glam Gons is my series that was award nominated. That's still continuing part three. And then I have a new prison series, Orange is the New Ink. That'll be, you know, constantly going and that's getting a lot of great reception. So I am starring and or starring, I'm in them, you know, all of these projects, but Ink Motel, I'm also in, I have a reoccurring role that was award nominated for supporting actress at ABN. Um, so it's good. Like I'm involved still heavily in my projects and um, I'm just kind of taking a step backwards from being so in like working for other companies right now, I'm taking a break and I'm also, you know, focusing, writing, directing, being in my own projects, but I also, um, I was casted for a big reality show, which I will be on. Hopefully, you know, we start filming pretty soon. We were filming pilots for a while. So, um, that was really cool. And I'm really looking forward to that. So kind of moving more into like the mainstream world, focusing more on things that are not as heavily adult related other than directing and producing, but I haven't performed I don't think anyone knows this, actually. This is a secret. I haven't performed since September, October of last year. So Is that the longest gap that you've had since you went in? It sure is. I think the longest gap I had before that was like two weeks. Maybe. Maybe not even. Yeah. I mean, I was shooting, especially after the stroke. I went back to work with a heart monitor on two weeks after I had the stroke. And I was like, and wow. it was not up since then like i i worked more after the stroke especially immediately following because i was trying to prove a point to myself and to everyone because I that. um that i have worked non-stop since i had a stroke basically and with no breaks nothing and i ran myself into the ground like and i definitely have had some like breakdowns in between there just mentally where I mean, how could you not? I just have like, dr like drove myself into a, a hole um, after having a stroke and not taking care of myself mentally um, and allowing myself recovery or anything else. Like it really affected me a lot dramatically. So, you know, I went through bouts of depression and, and had to deal with all these things, which I'm very honest about, you know, a lot of people wouldn't be, but I'm not ashamed of that. I think it's important to acknowledge those moments so that you know, there shouldn't be shame attached to it anyway, because mo a lot of people deal with the same things. And why we shame mental illness or depression, I have no idea when a lot of people suffer from it. But I've been open about that experience also, but I just kind of got gotten to these different points where I'm trying to recognize how I feel about things and why, and maybe there's a reason for those things and i should lean into things that are positive that make me feel good that i don't have to fight that i don't have to force myself to do or exhaust myself unnecessarily so yeah. i'm that's why i'm you yeah well look it was an absolute pleasure catching up with you today and we might catch up again in the future uh keep an eye on your projects and absolute pleasure yeah. anyway thanks again thank you so much take care you too.